Joining us on the show today, we have Mariel, who's created a really marvellous demo called Beyond Imitation that uses autoencoders for dance movement generation. First though, Mariel, please tell us a bit more about yourself. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Marielle Petit. I am a physicist. I'm currently a postdoctoral fellow at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, and um, I'm also an artist. So I, uh, I like to work with machine learning tools for diverse applications ranging from fundamental physics to the arts. Wow, that's very cool. And I love the combination of skill sets there, like this hybrid of uh, very, very uh, nerdy physics stuff along with the more creative side as well. That's very cool. Someone of my own heart. So <laughs> love it. Um, so tell us a bit more about what we've actually created today. Yeah. So over the past couple of years, I've worked with a couple different independent research groups to investigate the application of different machine learning tools to choreography and in particular to my dancing body. So I have captured data of myself doing improvisational dance in a motion capture studio. And uh, today I'm sharing some results of a generative model that we've trained to understand how my body moves and can create um, new movements in my same style. So clearly there's a lot involved in this project. Um, did you work with other people on this as well? Yeah, so I, um, I started on this question on my own and then over time I started um, inviting colleagues in and realizing that it was so much more amplified by working with other people. So uh, the team that I ended up assembling over the past few years consisted of um, other physicists who were colleagues of mine um, at CERN who specialized in machine learning as well as um, folks from the digital humanities um, who were experts in data visualization and um, software development, as well as some of my colleagues in the dance world who think about um, choreography and technologies in the context of their choreography. Wonderful. And uh, I believe you've actually got a video of one of these people in action <laughs> uh, using the product. Can we see that? Yeah, I'd love to share this. So this is my colleague, Raymond. Um, so he is performing um, in the studio, actually in the motion capture suit, and he is able to get live feedback from a trained model understanding his movements. And so you can see that in this, um, on the screen in the bottom part of this uh, video where he's actually getting information from the model about where in the latent space of the model his movements lie. So he's trying to explore as much of that latent space, um, sort of the model's version of his movements as possible. Very cool. And it's great how the dancer can kind of get you know, real-time feedback and then react to it themselves and continually move through that latent space, as you said. So very interesting. Okay, so you mentioned that you're using kind of full body motion capture to do this. Uh, do you have any more information on that? Yeah, so I had access to this um, gorgeous studio that basically had 20 motion capture cameras um, arranged in roughly a circle above me. And this is an image of me in the motion capture suit, which basically consists of 53 reflective dots that uh, are all over my body. So the motion capture studio is able to um, see uh, all these different points um, at, a, at around 35 fr frames per second while I'm moving. That sounds pretty exciting. Can we see it in action? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a video that I'd love to show here is uh, a video piece that I constructed, which I call Mirror Exercise. And this is an AI generated duet with myself. So what you're seeing here is um, in the, the figure in black is my real motion capture data from a couple data taking sessions in the studio. And in blue, you see a dancing accompaniment that is generated by the model. So in each case, the model is seeing a certain segment of my movements and is um, creating a slight variation on it in some sense. So I can control how, um, how much variation or how little variation I want to see. But in each case, they have this nice relationship. That's awesome. So it's literally responding to you in real time. And I got a question here, actually. So is this responding frame by frame or is it taking like time into, into account? So like if you're doing like a hand swoop, it will also maybe do a, a, a swooping movement with the hand or is it just analyzing each frame in the moment and then responding? Yeah, great question. So yeah. it is getting a sense of um, movement. It's taking in, it analyzes about five seconds of movement at a time and then it oh, creates see. its yeah. own um, response or interpretation of that phrase. I see. Very interesting. And of course, um, you mentioned that you're using uh, autoencoders, which essentially is a special type of generative machine learning model architecture 
that, as we heard from Douglas on our last show, essentially consists of an encoder and a decoder. Um, now, can you tell us a bit more about what makes yours different to a regular autoencoder in order to do this custom uh, model that you've made here? Yeah, absolutely. So um, uh, a typical autoencoder is trying to learn a compressed representation of your input data. And that's essentially still the same thing that we're using. Um, but we train what's called a variational autoencoder, and that allows us to use it as a generative model. And basically the main difference is that instead of learning a single representation for every input image or input sequence, uh, we are learning a distribution to represent each input. And so I can then sample from those distributions and I can get a variety of different outputs as a result. I see. So that's, okay, so you can vary what you what the results are that you get. That's very cool. Um, so in that case, um, you know, I, I'm sure many people watching right now want to try this out for themselves. Is there a website they can go to to actually see this in action and, and play with it? Yeah, absolutely. So my colleagues and I created this website, um, beyondimitation.com, and it's sort of a companion piece to our paper as well as some of the videos that you just saw. So this is meant to give um, folks a hands-on experience uh, playing around with this model itself. So um, we have a little bit of a description of what the project looks like. We link to our code. And at the bottom here, we use TensorFlow.js to see a live demonstration of the model. And so uh, in particular, what that means is you can kind of scroll through and pick a different time, time frame in my movement sequence. And then you can choose how much, how much variation you want to include on the original phrase. So if I draw this all the way down to the bottom, um, we see the model's best representation of this original phrase. But if I scale it up, then we would expect to get a movement that's related, but is distinctively different from that original phrase. So how did you refine the process to actually make the duet? Yeah, so beyond just generating new movements, we realized that there were lots of different ways that we could apply the same trained model to create some interesting results. So in particular, the model has a sense of which movements are related to one another based on how close together they are in the model's latent space. So this is a cartoon that illustrates what that means, where you might have two sequences that are pretty, the model sees as highly related that have shown some shared characteristics. You know, maybe it's that all four limbs are on the floor, or maybe down here, it's something about the timing, about moving from the ground to back to standing. And I can exploit this um, basically by uh, looking at the model's best representation of a given sequence. And that's what I illustrate here. So in black, you see my real data. And on the far left in blue, we see the model's best representation of that output. And you can see that the models managed to capture a lot of the important kinematic qualities of that sequence. But if I, instead of decoding that, that, that original point, if I add a little bit of noise to that point in the latent space and uh, decode some new point that's close by, we get these subtle variations, for example, this rotation at the end of the sequence, or I can add even more variation and get a sequence that's even um, further away from that original. Very cool. And I guess my question at this point then is, as an artist, how much noise do you add before you consider it original? <laughs> I guess there's a fine line between when it's the same and versus when it's something different, right? Yeah, I've, um, I've thought of the duet. I think it goes through different moments where there are points where it seems like I am redoing the original choreographic intent that I had in the studio that day. Maybe if I could just go back in time and make a slightly different choice, it still feels like it's capturing something, the same idea. But then you're right, beyond a certain threshold, it starts to become more like two different bodies that share some kind of awareness of each other, but they're meaningfully doing different things. That's awesome. I love that. I think people can have a lot of fun with this. And I've got one more question now that I'm seeing this actually. So in TensorFlow.js, we've also got a mod model called uh, MediaPipe Blaze Pose 3D, which is a 3D point estimation for the human body. Um, would you be able to pipe that into your system to use that? in the future so that users could actually have it respond to them in real time via the webcam? Or is it very um, tailored to the points that you had with your motion capture device? Yeah, well, this this model in particular was trained on the data set that, of course, came from my motion capture um, sure. movements. Yeah. So that had around 50 um, key points on my okay, body. OK, so quite, it was it's quite granular there. Yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But that's not to say that the, you know, the generic type of model that we're using, I think it's very similar strategies could be applied. Um, and nice. it's, it's yeah. a really cool idea, actually. 
<laughs> I mean, it'd be great for people to be able to try it in their own homes as well. And uh, this is a great piece of research. And um, I love how you brought it to life in the browser of TensorFlow.js. Which brings me on to my second question, actually, there. So um, did you train this originally in Python and then convert it to JS? Or did you do the whole pipeline in JS? Uh, what, what kind of stack did you use? Yeah, originally it was all trained in Python. And um, we exported the, the trained model weights and then uploaded the model to, to, to TensorFlow.js. Awesome. And we're starting to see a lot more people do this, actually. I'm always excited to see um, the kind of intersection of the Python world and the JS world together. And I hope more people like yourself uh, do this in the future because um, you know, great things can happen. And of course, you can get the reach and scale of the web for the shareability and all this kind of stuff, too. Mm. Um, so I hope more research comes out in JS <laughs> and gets converted over. So I look forward to seeing all of that. Yeah, it was um, one of awesome. the goals of the project was to make uh, generating choreography feel more accessible for different people. So even if you might not yeah. consider yourself a choreographer, you can still play around with movement. Totally. Yeah, I, I definitely played with it for a few <laughs> a few hours the other day. So it's a bit good fun. Um, now, I, I also love when creative and tech worlds kind of come together as you've done. Uh, so I'm curious, like, uh, are there any plans to extend this further or maybe new ideas you have around TensorFlow.js that you might be considering? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I consider this to be a branch of my um, scientific research as well as my creative research. And um, next, uh, well, I'm really excited to create a, a live performance based on some of these models. And in terms of the research as well, um, I am interested in scaling up to thinking about analyzing duets. So rather than just a single body, understanding how different bodies respond to one another and seeing if a model can understand those relationships. Very cool. I look forward to seeing what you create there. So I also heard you're considering looking into graph neural networks as well. Um, any more details on that? Right. So recently I was interested in applying graph neural networks to the analysis of my movements because uh, the previous models that I used really had no sense of the structure of my body. Um, it was just looking at this cloud of points moving in space. So rather than focusing on only generating new movements, I was interested in moving the analysis inward to understanding the kinds of relationships that existed between parts of my body. So I worked with a group um, with Intel's AI labs um, with a couple different colleagues who uh, helped me to basically augment the existing variational autoencoder to a graph-based variational autoencoder. Awesome. So can we see that in action? Yeah. So the GNN that we ended up training was designed to identify patterns in terms of the types of relationships that it noticed between different points on my body. So what you're seeing here are a couple different categories that the model has learned for the types of interactions that are happening while I'm moving. And in particular, um, the edge types one, two, and three represent um, meaningful edge types, whereas the first edge type here represents um, no interaction between those edges. So you might notice that, for instance, edge type two, which is in blue, all of these connections originate from my right hand and then connect to my left foot. So the model is identifying some meaningful patterns in the, these cross-body connections. Um, or in edge type one here in red, all of these originate in my left hand and then connect to my upper torso. So it's super interesting to me to see what a model sees as driving my movements versus the maybe my own understanding of my body's relationships while I dance. Very cool. I look forward to seeing how that progresses. Thank you. And as mentioned, all the links we've described in the show will be in the description after the show. So do go check those out. And of course, consider leaving a comment if you've got ideas of how you might want to use this sort of technology in the future. So thanks, Mariel, for being on the show. And I look forward to seeing more of your work in the future. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.